Hello my dear children welcome back with the yet another topic of ICSC class 10th biology uh, that is chapter 7 chemical coordination in plants okay so today we are going to start seventh chapter a new chapter okay that is chemical coordination in plants okay so yeah uh, after a long uh, couple of days i'm back with the, this chapter okay that is the unit 2 of plant physiology okay that was going on okay i remember okay and uh, uh, yeah this chapter chemical coordination plants is very interesting chapter okay in which uh, you will know that how plants do their movement okay uh, how uh, in uh, chemical coordination in humans or in animals we had seen that Uh, we have seen that uh, how we we human beings move okay how our movement take uh, takes place but in this chapter today we are going to see this chemical coordination plants in this chapter we are going to see how plants moves okay this is a very uh, interesting chapter and an interesting topic as well okay how plants move we know that they do not move from their place okay they are totally uh, like uh, stand on their but on the particular plant okay, on the on the particular uh, area and they do not move only their parts move they do not move their parts move okay so how this all phenomena take place let's see okay with this chapter and yeah without wasting no time let's get started with our this chapter okay so yeah as usual let's start Uh, our day with this beautiful quote which is very simple but important as well okay don't wish for it work for it okay means uh, uh, this is very interesting you can uh, understand by your self only okay don't wish for it work for it means don't wish uh, like uh, sometimes uh, we uh, Uh, sometimes we saw uh, uh, sometimes we said this that uh, i will do this okay and uh, we did uh, we never did that okay we always said we always said that uh, i will do this work uh, within this month i will do that work within this month but we are unable to do that particular work work on that particular time okay so we just uh, will to do it okay we just will that uh, i will do that work i will do that work we never decide to do okay we never decide to do we just speak okay so this is a very interesting and very simple quote that don't wish for it work for it if you want to achieve that goal you have to work for it don't just said that i will do this i will do this you you need to do, do some work upon it okay that's why uh, that's on that's why only you are uh, you are going to do something okay so yeah now let's start with a beautiful uh, chapter so the first question okay the first question that strike on on our mind when see, we see this name chemical coordination plants that what is plant hormones okay uh, since we are going to see some types of hormones in this chapter okay because they are only the uh, thing which stimulate uh, the uh which uh, stimulate the thing okay so what are hormones okay we have seen in animal part as well in human being that what are hormones now we are going to see in plant since we are in plant physiology okay so we are going to see what are plant hormones so we know that the uh, movement in animals and in human being okay is very common we do move okay we humans we animals we do we do move from one place to another in order to find our convenient uh, place in order to find our food as well okay we move from one place to another okay but since plants got all their uh, things and all their uh, uh, since plants got all their things directly okay they directly prepare their food by photosynthesis okay because so they do not need to move from one place to another okay since they got all the things surrounded by themselves okay all the things are present near to them the plants what whatever they need all the things are in the environment only okay like uh, for photosynthesis sunlight 
it is uh, we have ample amount of sunlight okay then water okay water is also present near to plants okay then uh, oxygen this is very crucial oxygen is all always in the uh, air okay always in the environment and many factors okay plants need these things and these all things are there only okay they are surrounded the plant is surrounded by the, uh, these things okay so plants do not need to move because they are having their all the uh, things all the uh, we should say all the ingredients for making food okay they are having all types of ingredients for making food but we human beings need to search that thing like if we have to eat something the, for that we have to go to the market and for the market we have to go to the forest to collect that fruit okay so we have to um, bender here and there okay we have to bender here and there in order to find our convenient food okay but plants do not need to bender here and there because all the things are uh, present on their uh, by their uh, side only okay so uh, so though uh, then also then also plants have some movement as uh, then also plants have some movement like twisting bending elongation these are some uh, movements in the plants that we can see okay twisting like uh, some plants you can see when you touch it direct, it rapidly react okay like touch me not plant okay and uh, some plants they elongate too much okay you can see that uh, the half part of the plant is uh, it is bent and the next part it is erect so this is what this is some types of movement which we will see in plants okay so uh, this is because of the two terms that we had read in our uh, uh, plant, animal part as well okay like a chem chemical coordination animal that we had read in lower classes in that part we had read that what are stimulus and what are responses okay so what are stimulus stimulus are that are that is something the change in external or internal environment of a uh, organism okay the the movement that is uh, the movement they did the plants do uh, do some movement and through that movement there is some change from uh, in the internal and external environment of a organism or of a plant is known as stimuli okay it is known as the stimulus and next what is the action that had been taken okay what is the action that has been taken to uh, uh, cause that uh, stimuli okay to cause that movement to cause that uh, caused by the stimuli is known as the response okay like uh, uh, let's take an example a uh, very common example when we put our hand when suddenly we put our hand in a hot object okay in a hot object we rapidly uh, withdraw our hand okay from that hot object why it is so this is uh, this is be why we are withdrawing that hand because this is our response okay this is our response to that stimuli okay so this is stimuli in response okay any change in the external internal environment of an organism that is known as the stimuli and that resulting action that has been taken okay that has been taken by the stimuli that is known as the response okay so i hope there is no problem in the stimuli and responses uh, one marker question can come from these two points okay so make sure you read it next plant do not appear to have a nervous system yeah we know that plant do not have any sense organ or any nervous system okay their sensitivity and uh, sensitivity and coordination is the result of a chemical control okay plants response uh, respond to stimuli by producing some compounds some chemical compounds that are known as the hormones as we animals do okay and animals refers to we human being and animals both okay don't ponder that i'm just saying to the animal animal are be also a be also an animal isn't it so animal refers to both human and animal both okay so uh, we know that uh, some chemical compound that has been secreted from our mind to the body is known as the hormones okay now uh, this hormone term was first used by william bayless okay the william bayless and ernest uh, starling these both fellow these two scientists but used this hormone word first time in 1902 
okay 1902 they uh, coiled you can say they coiled this word hormone okay so i hope this uh, till here all the concepts are clear i hope in this just you need to learn what is stimuli and response that you uh, have an idea from earlier classes only okay and the hormone who discover the hormone in which year okay and who were do, uh, those two fellow william bayless and ernest starling okay so yeah now let us study some plants hormone in detail okay now we are going to see some five types of plant hormones uh, they are the auxins gibberellins cytokinins and the fourth one would be the ethylene and the fifth one would be the abscessic acid these are the five types of plant hormones that we are going to study today okay and yep children among these five the ethylene the fourth one ethylene is a, a gaseous uh, hormone okay it is a is a hormone which is a which is in a form of gas and rest in a form of liquids okay so i'm again saying five types of hormones we are going to see at auxins gibberellins cytokines and ethylene and uh, the fifth one would be the uh, abscessic acid okay among them ethylene is the liquid uh, sorry ethylene is a gaseous hormone so these some points you need to remember okay and rest we are going to do right now okay so first one is auxin okay the first one is auxin so we know that uh, the term auxin was first coined by the fw went okay this is the uh, scientist who coined this auxin world first time okay F W went. Now, what is the meaning of oxygen? Children, oxygen means uh, to grow, to enhance. Okay, the meaning of oxygen is to enhance. That will do. Uh, that we'll see right now. Okay, so oxygen world was first coined by F W went in 1928 from the Greek word. Okay, the oxygen from the Greek word oxygen. Okay, oxygen, which means to grow, as I told you. Okay, oxygen means to grow because it promotes cell elongation cell elongation means it elongate the cell it enhance the cell okay um, which enhance our plant only we know that when our cells enhance then our growth also enhance okay so these uh, their main function is to cell elongation okay so that we'll see right now so auxins uh, are powerful growth stimulants okay they are the most powerful growth stimulant because they enhance in they enhance the plants uh, height okay and they are quite effective as well at extremely low concentrations auxins are universally distributed in higher plants as well as in lower plants like algae fungi etc they are they uh, are uh, spread all over the plant whether the small uh, whether the plant is dwarf whether the plant is tall okay and uh, in higher plants they are present more in actively growing region like root apex suit apex lateral meristem etc okay means just difference is this that in higher plants okay the higher plants have more auxins okay the higher plants have more auxins la uh, like uh, the part in higher plants root apex suit apex they are having the more uh, auxins that's why the root apex and suit apex grow very rapidly okay this is the reason because they are having the auxins okay and auxins is known as the growth uh, elongation hormone okay and yes children uh, in higher plants they presented the actively growing this was done lateral meristem etc iaa iaa means the full form of iaa it can be asked from you indole 3 acetic acid this can be asked in your questions that IAA refers to indol 3 acetic acid okay so make sure you remember the name uh, full form of IAA and some other thing okay it can be asked in your one marker question okay indol 3 acetic acid is the full form of IAA it is the main natural oxygen found in the plant okay so just you need to remember that auxins promote the cell elongation okay and this as like a, they help in 
delaying in uh, sensation of leaf. Delaying in sensation means they uh, do not wilted the leaves. Uh, they do not wilted the leaves very rapidly. They do not uh, do so. Okay. They delay in the falling of leaves. Okay. Like we see that some uh, some in some plants our leaves uh, got yellowish. They are got wilted. Why it is so? Because they are having the less amount of oxygen. Okay. The more amount of oxygen plant do not wilt their leaves very rapidly. Okay. So and the uh, one thing is also they induce formation of parthenocarpy fruits as well. Now what is this parthenocarpy fruit? First of all, let understand what is this parthenocarpy. Parthenocarpy is, a, a, you can see, the formation of a fruit without germination. Okay, without germination, the formation of a fruit is known as a parthenocarpy. And that fruit is known as the, this process is known as the parthenocarpy. And the fruit is known as the parthenocarpic fruit. Okay, so this can ask any questions as well. Okay. So I hope the first type of oxygen, uh, first type of hormone is clear to you. Let's see some functions of oxygen as well. As I told you that it stimulates cell division. Okay, it divides the cell in uh, because uh, uh, for enhancing the plant, the shells should be divided. Okay, then also the plant, then only the plants will enhance. Okay, so it divides the it uh, it help to a uh, cell division. Okay, it stimulate means it do the. Uh, process fast okay it do the process fast it act as a catalyst like in chemistry we had read that uh, ke chemicals um, in chemicals the catalyst is put uh, is poured somewhat in order to enhance its speed so in its uh, oxygen uh, it is also the oxygen also act as a catalyst okay for the cell division okay next it stimulates cell elongation Okay, cell elongation means the wilting of the leaves. It do not uh, wilt the leaves so rapidly. Okay, then it promotes apical dominancy. That is agriculture work. Okay, and next is develops adventitious roots, cause tropic movements in stems and roots, and stimulates the development of fruit. Okay. So I hope this functions of oxygen are clear. This can be asked in. To you okay so make sure you remember these functions okay the first one is promote uh, the cell uh, it uh, stimulate the cell division then it uh, promote cell elongation okay then it promotes apical dominancy okay and develops adventitious roots okay and cause tropic movements in stems and roots okay and stimulates the development of fruits okay Next, second is gibberellins. Okay, the next uh, type of hormone which we are going to see is gibberellins. Okay, gibberellins. So, the oxygens we had seen. Now, it times to uh, see the second uh, plant hormone that is gibberellins. So, it is also a plant hormone. Okay, uh, we, uh, but in gibberellins we have four forms. Not four only, means we have many forms of gibberellins like gibberellin 1, gibberellin 2, gibberellin 3, gibberellin 4, gibberellin 5 and so on means there are innumerable forms of gibberellins present in a plant okay but the gibberellin 3 okay it is the most common uh, uh, like a it is the most common uh, type of uh, gibberellin okay it is the most common type of horm uh, hormone okay of gibberellin and it is uh, very much studied nowadays okay in higher plants gibberellins are mainly distributed in the meristematic region like stem apex root apex buds seeds etc make sure you remember these locations okay we are these uh, uh, hormones are present okay in a maximum amount so in a plant in plant they are present in root apex root apex okay and then but seeds etc they are present in this okay so in gibberellins we have to remember that gibberellins are of many types like gibberellin 1 gibberellin 2 gibberellin 3 gibberellin 4 gibberellin 5 and so on okay but the gibberellin 3 is the most studied form of gibberellin okay gibberellin 3 is the most studied form in gibberellin okay and they are present in a root apex root apex but seeds etc i hope you have remembered this okay by reading once you can remember these things 
now what is the function of gibberellins as you as auxins they also stimulate stem elongation okay they elongate the stem okay and they stimulate root growth okay they stimulate root growth and promote flowering okay because of gibberellins we find the flowers on the plants okay and promote the growth of lateral buds and this stimulate the germination of seeds as well okay this is very 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 important okay this can be a question that which hormone stimulate the germination of seeds gibberellins which hormones promote flowering gibberellins okay so i hope let's move on to the next part that is cytokines okay cytokines is also a very interesting hormone okay and this is present all over the plant okay this is very widely distributed plant hormone okay so this was discovered uh, recently in 1950s okay there is uh, no uh, very uh, like a common year for it okay just in between of 1950 in the beginning of 1950 by scoop and miller make sure you remember the name of the scientist who discovered these um, hormones scoop and miller scoop and miller okay this is very weird name you need to remember that scoop and miller these both fellow discovered cytokines okay cytokines uh, have specific effect on cell division okay they are widely distributed in plants as i told you they are very um, widely vastly present on the plant okay all over the plant they are produced in a root tips and are transported through xylem cells where are they produced they are produced in the lower part of the plant that is the root okay and they are then sent to the sent by the xylem to all over the plant okay now uh, comparatively large amount of cytokines are found in germinating seeds developing fruits embryo etc in these parts these cytokines are present widely okay so yep i hope this is also clear to you okay so this was discovered in 1950s by skung and miller you need to remember these names i am again and again saying it means this is very important okay and cytokines are widely distributed in plants they are produced in a root tips and are transported through xylem and are uh, xylem cells okay so functions of cytokines it promotes cell division as usual we are reading from the sec- first uh, hormone and then it have the morphogenesis okay what is morphogenesis children morphogenesis uh, i think it is morphogenesis is the uh, you can say it gives the shape to the plant okay morphogenesis okay it gives the shape and size to the plant okay and next is lateral bud development okay it uh, develop the lateral bud and delay of senescence okay senescence as i told you the delay in the wilting of leaves okay and uh, stomatal opening and rapid transport in xylem stream okay they enhance the rate of transportation transportation in xylem okay so this is the function so let's move on to the fourth one that is ethylene this is our gaseous hormone okay this is the hormone which is in a gaseous form so this is very interesting and very in, uh, important as well okay because it induces fr- uh, fruit ripening because of this ethylene our fruit ripens okay so it is only the hormone which is in a form of gas okay in ordinary temperature and it is produced in fruits and remain in a same fruit okay do not uh, like it is a, it is not like other gases that it uh, evaporate okay it flows up it is not like that it remains on that particular fruit on me okay and therefore unlike other hormones its site of synthesis and site of action are not different a gas ca- causing ripening of fruits was first found to be emanating from uh, oranges which help in a ripening of bananas when stored to water this was recognized when some person uh, put oranges and bananas in one basket okay and these oranges start ripening the banana so through this we come to know that there is a hormone definitely there is a hormone that ripening the banana and then 
later we discover more and we find that this is a ethylene okay so the gas was the found to be ethylene by r game sorry r game this fellow who found this ethylene okay so r game remember this name the name are very funny right r game this is something <laughs> so yeah ethylene is produced in higher plants and fungi all living cells are capable of producing ethylene but more ethylene is produced in meristematic tissues okay more ethylene are present in meristematic tissues okay so i hope this is clear to you ethylene okay it is a type of uh, hormone which is in a form of gases and it helps to ripening of fruits it helps in ripening of fruits okay and this ethylene uh, promotes sensation as well as all the all the means the main function is to provide sensation all the five types of hormones uh, uh, just uh, read, uh, i think the abscisic acid just to ignore uh, excluding ex abscisic acid all the four types of hormones they do the same function that is they uh, delay sensation they promote sensation okay so i hope ethylene is clear to you next functions of ethylene as i told you it induces ripening of fruits okay it drives the fruits as in a case of banana uh, okay and next it promotes abscission and sensation of leaf flowers etc okay next it cells sorry what's happening let's see okay in cells uh, it only increases the width not the length okay it enhances the width the diameter okay the diameter of the cell not the length make sure this is a very 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 pivotal point it enhances in uh, width not in length okay it enhances in diameter not in length this is the function of ethylene okay three to four functions are maximum of each of them okay and uh, yeah this uh, yeah let's see uh, the next one that is the fifth and the last one abscisic acid that is aba the full form of aba is abscisic acid this can be asked in your questions okay what i'm saying it's important okay now abscisic acid is a growth retarding hormone all provide all four of types of uh, hormones provide the growth but this is the growth retarding hormone it retard the growth it stops the growth okay and it is found in angiosperms what is angiosperms plants with uh, produce flowers which have flowers are known as angiosperms gymnosperms what are gymnosperms we do not have plants okay uh, which do not have flowers that is known as the gymnosperm okay angiosperm which are having uh, the plants which are having flowers gymnosperms the plants which do not have any fruit on a uh, flower okay and what is petridophyte petridophytes they reproduce using spores okay they reproduce uh, they pre, uh, reproduce using spores they are usually the hydrated plant okay usually they are hydrated plant which lives under water this petridophyte okay it is found in the chloroplast of the leaves okay it found in a chloroplast of a leaf fruits and seeds contain higher amount of abscisic acid okay fruits and seeds are having higher amount of abscisic acid because the um, fruits the length of fruits should not get extended that's why they are present in a high amount because fruit should be in a common form okay it should not be extended more than its common length that's why these acids are present okay because they are the growth starting hormones okay so functions of abscisic acid is it prevents seed germination inhibits show uh, shoot growing during environmental stress okay it stop the shoot growth growing okay stimulate stomata closer as well okay it is stimulate the closer of stomata in uh, response to water suppose uh, there is a there is a transpiration takes place from the stomata and when there is a excess amount of transpiration takes place then these abscisic acid closed stomata so that the water did not evaporate totally okay then next is cause abscission abscission means buds leaves petals flowers and fruits okay they cause abscission so with this we come to an end of our whole uh, not whole chapter 
means hormones okay we have read the five types of hormones as well okay that is the first one would be the auxins gibberellins cytokines ethylene and abscisic acid these are five types of hormones okay and i also told you the some of the important tips okay so and jab children this abscisic acid is also no uh, this i did not mention here i think they are also known as the stress hormone okay because they produce the stress okay they produce, uh, they cause the abscission okay so uh yep with this uh, we come to an end of our this first part let's see our second part that is uh, some tropic movements in plant yep this is very interesting and very easy part okay this is very much interesting let's see tropic movements in plants okay so yep uh, uh we know that when a seed germinate in a soil its root and shoot keep growing if the developing developing plant is to survive okay whenever we sow any seed okay so its root as well as its shoot the seeds they both grow okay they enhance in length okay so but the growth of the root and the shoot must take place in a right direction yeah this is very crucial to have a right direction of root and shoot because root they should be go downward to the uh, soil and shoot they should be go upward from the soil right the shoot will should be go from upward of the uh, soil and the root should be go downward in a soil this is pivotal okay this should be uh, uh, like important okay the roots must go downwards to in the into the soil which will provide support water and minerals for the plant okay so that uh, the shoot uh, the root can provide water support to the plant and so yeah uh, sorry for the disturbance children okay so the root should be go downwards okay in order to uh, take water and minerals okay and uh, uh, rest of the things and the shoot should be go upward of the plant in order to do in order to trap sunlight okay to do the uh, photosynthesis in order to do transpiration okay so these are some phenomena which takes from root and shoot as well okay and yeah where we were the plants could carry out photosynthesis in order to produce food for growing plants yeah the movement of uh, these parts of the plant takes place in a direct response to external stimuli it is not from internal it is from external stimuli okay that uh, like uh, environment can affect okay and uh, the oxygen can affect okay the external factors can affect us okay so the direction of response is related to the direction from which the stimulus comes such are responses known as the tropism this is very crucial the tropism what is tro tropism tropism uh, you can say the direction of the response is related to the direction from which the stimulus comes this response is known as the tropism now the term tropism okay it comes from a greek word that is the tropos okay which means to turn okay the tropic means to turn okay tropos which means to turn so we are going to see some types of tropism some type of movement in a plant some type of tropic movements in plants which help them to uh, thrive in that uh, like uh, which help them to thrive in that uh, surroundings okay so the first is phototropism get children by the name you can indicate each and every tropes okay each and every movement by the name you can detect okay without reading i can tell you that what is phototropes photo first of all tell me the prefix the prefix of phototropes that is the photo what is the meaning of photo children it is not that photo okay it is not that frame okay i'm not talking about that frame i'm talking of what is photo in biology in science what do you mean by photo photo refers to the light okay this is very interesting if you read by yourself uh, you can detect okay photo means light okay so the movement of plant parts in the direction of light from where the light is coming from the direction of light from the light is coming is known as phototropism 
very simple the movement of plant part the movement of plants part in the direction of a photo in the direction of light is known as phototropism okay so uh, the name tell you all the thing okay the name uh, told you all the thing phototropism the prefix photo means light okay the, what is the meaning of photo photosynthesis means the synthesis of food in a presence of light okay like this this is also phototropism means the movement of plants part in presence of light is known as phototropism so i hope this is clear to you see bending of the plant towards light this is known as the phototropism without reading this all thing i am going to tell you now there should be two uh, phototropism there should be two phototropism the first one would be the positive phototropism the second one would be the negative phototropism now what is positive phototropism and what is negative photo phototropism the plant part which is moving towards the light from where the light source is coming the plants part are moving towards that direction towards that uh, in the, the in that particular direction from where the light is coming that is known as the positive phototropism and the plants part which is moving up to the opposite direction of that source from where the source is coming from where the light from where the light is coming to the opposite of the direction that is known as the negative uh, phototropism so in this could you tell me what is the positive phototropism and what is the negative phototropism could you tell me yeah you can tell me if you understood my sentence then you can definitely tell me that yeah the shoot the this part what is first of all let's see what is shoot and root the shoot is the upper part okay from the tip of the leaf till the uh, this part is known as the shoot and the rest root the rest part is known as the root okay so which will be the positive phototropism and which will be the negative phototropism the shoot will be the positive phototropism because the shoot is um, bending towards the light only okay they are having the movement towards the light that's why they are they are known as the positive phototropism and which is uh, like moving opposite to the uh, opposite to the sunlight source is known as the negative phototropism that is the root okay so shoot is known as the positive phototropism and root are known as the negative phototropism is it clear is it clear i hope this is clear to you let me read this all thing for you phototropism means movement towards light the plants grow in light illuminating from uh, them from all direction grown more or less upward but if the light is brighter on one side of the plant then another then uh, then another then the shoot of the plant will bend towards that increase light and the root if they are exposed will grow away from it the shoot are called positive phototropism and root are called negative phototropism from where the light is illuminating illuminating the plant part would bend to that part only okay from where the light source is coming okay that's why i'm writing that's a, uh, that's why i wrote here bending of the plant towards the light is known as the phototropism okay i hope this is clear to you next is geotropism now by the by this prefix geo what do you understand geo reef refers to what rapidly tell me what is the meaning of geo gravity isn't it the meaning of geo is gravity so the movement of plants part towards the gravity is known as the geotropism okay the movement of plants part towards the gravity is known as the uh, is known as the uh, geotropism now in this some children do a lot of mistake though it is very simple that's uh, that then, then also the children do lot of mistake because they forgot what is positive geotropism what is negative photo, uh, geotropism since as i told you geotropism see geotropism is the uh, growing of plants part towards the gravity gravity believe me, from uh, from the up, uh, from the up part to the lower part isn't it so the ground is known as the positive geotropism and the upper upper part okay that is the sky part is known as the negative phototropism so in plants what is the positive phototropism what is the negative phototropism tell me the root will be the positive phototropism okay root will be the pho uh, positive phototropism because they are growing towards the gravity okay gravity will be in the uh, in the earth okay and 
द शूट विल बी द नेगेटिव फोटोट्रॉपिस बिकॉज दे आर मूविंग टू अवे फ्रॉम द ग्रेविटी सो द थिंग विच इज़ मूविंग टू वॉर्ड्स विच इज़ ग्रोइंग टू वॉर्ड्स द टू वॉर्ड्स द सोर्स ओके दैट इज नोन इज द पॉजिटिव एंड द पार्ट द प्लान पार्ट दैट इज ग्रोइंग अवे फ्रॉम द शो सोर्स इज नोन एज द नेगेटिव ओके सो इन दिस द रूट्स दे आर मूविंग टूवर्ड्स द ग्रेविटी टूवर्ड्स द ग्रेविटी मीन्स टूवर्ड्स द अर्थ ओके दैट्स वाई दे आर नोन एज द पॉजिटिव जियो ट्रॉपिक ओके एंड द शूट शूट रिफर्स टू द अपर पार्ट ऑफ द प्लान दैट्स यू नो आई ओके शूट मूव्स अवे फ्रॉम द Uh, what I can say, away from the gravity. That's why they are known as the negative geotropics. Okay, so the response of uh, are to grow of a uh, plant parts to grow towards away from the gravity is known as the geotropics. Okay, so the term geotropics means growing towards the Earth's gravity. It is also called geotropic uh, gravity uh, gravitrotropics. Okay, it is also known as gravitrotropics. This can be a question. What is geotropism also known as? Okay, gravitropism. Okay, the growth of plant part towards the gravity is known as gravitropism or geotropism. Organs which grow towards the gravity are positive geotropic. That is the root tip, and those who grow away from the gravity are known as the negative geotropic, like shoot tip. Okay, the response of plant to gravity can be observed in the laboratory when the seedlings are placed in a pot filled with a moist soil. This is an experiment in which you need to put ah uh, some seeds. Okay, so after some time, after a couple of days, you would see that the lower part, the roots are growing inside the soil, and the upper part is growing abroad. So in the soil, okay, abroad from the soil. So the abroad. part is known as the negative geotropism and the lower part is known as the positive geotropism okay so the shoot show negative geotropism and the sorry yeah and uh, the root show positive geotropism okay so i hope this is also clear to you there is no need to understand you can understand by reading by yourself only okay this is so easy next you can see this experiment i put it down the experiment i hope this is oh no no this is of hydrotropis okay let's next is hydrotropis now prefix hydro what's the meaning of hydro children hydro electricity hydrogen what is it hydro refers to the water okay hydro refers to the water so the movement of body parts of the plant parts the movement of plants part towards the water source towards the source of water is known as positive hydrotropism and that is from away from the high, uh, water is known as the negative hydrotropism okay so the movement of uh, plant parts in response to water or moisture okay is called hydrotropism when a plant part grows towards the source of moisture like roots Uh, like uh, roots, it is said to be positive hydrotropism because roots moves towards the water. Okay, shoot do not move towards the water. Roots always, always roots move towards the water. That's why they are known as the positive hydrotropism. While the shoot moves away from the hydro, hydro means the water. Okay, the moves the uh, sh the shoot moves away from the uh, uh, that water is known as the negative hydrotropism. Okay. so yeah till here i hope this is clear to you okay so the growth uh, roots towards moisture and so that uh, roots will be near the water available in the soil thus roots are positively be hydrotropism and shoots are negatively hydrotropism okay so you can see in this uh, in this particular diagram as well root grows straight okay in a moist soil and here you can see there is a uh, Uh, here you have seen you uh, put a uh, you put a plant inside the soil and some water okay so little bit of, uh, amount of water in order to do the soil moist okay so you can see the uh, root uh, grows uh, the root is erect it is grows uh, straight because uh, the water is uni uh, the water is distributed universally in this soil that's why they are erect but in this some part is dry 
because they do not have any water but in some part they pour some water so the after some time the root the root will move towards the source of water you can see here towards the source of water okay so this is what hydrotropis but okay i'm telling you with an experiment that means you can get it hydrotrop is the movement of water towards the source of water the movement body pass towards the sorry the movement of plants pass towards the source of water is known as hydrotropis where roots are known as the positive hydrotropis and shoot are known as the negative hydrotropis i hope this is clear to you next thigmotropis thigmo the prefix thigmo refers to the touch okay the thigmo refers to the touch okay so in uh, the activity or you can see the movement that occur when we touch anything when we uh, touch anything is known as the thigmotropis okay it occurs through a response of touching stimulus okay some interesting uh, response we can see in the touching okay like we can see in uh, cascata cascata is a plant see uh, sweet uh, sweet pea you can see the tentacles bind the another plant okay in order to find some support okay and you can see some other plants you can take okay that uh, the coil the tentacles they coil into the another plant in order to find support okay money plant yeah money plant is also a best example of thigmotropism okay so the uh, and touch me not why i can forget this plant and this plant touch me not is also the same thing okay when we touch it okay then it will the leaves of touch me not will be built it okay so this is what thigmotropis okay so the growth movement of plant parts in response to touch stimulus is known as the thigmotropis the prefix thigmo will tell you what is the meaning of thigmotropis means the activity that occur when we touch any plant part is known as thigmotropis okay next is chemotropis chemo refers to chemicals okay prefix always tell you something different okay chemo refers to chemicals so the plants part uh, it is a phenomena uh, of growth of plant organs in response to chemicals okay the movement of pollen tube as you can see here only okay in in this uh, the moving of pollen grains in the pollen tube that in a ovule okay and then uh, it will form the like a new uh, plant okay it is a best example of um geomotropis okay so uh, you can see that the movement of pollen tube of angiosperms and gymnosperms as i told you angiosperms which produce flowers and fruits gymnosperms we do not uh, produce flowers and fruits okay towards the sugar and peptones secreted by the neck canal cells of the female uh, gymnotype okay gymnophyte uh, gymnophyte okay is an example of chemotropism okay so the movement of pollen grains and pollen uh, pollen grains towards the ovule why because they have produced some sugar peptone okay uh, sugar and peptone so the movement of that uh, gymnos uh, okay towards the sugar and uh, sugar uh, sugar and peptones through the uh, neck canals okay is no is the best example of gymno tropism the movement of fungi growing towards the areas richer in fruit is also gym gymnotropism okay so i hope that this is clear to you in gymnotropism just you need to remember the response that has been uh, takes place in response to chemicals okay it is the phenomena of growth of plants or organs in response to chemicals is known as chemotropism easy yeah it's easy so let's is very interesting you can see this is the heliotropis what is heliotropis the movement of sun plant not any other plant the movement of sun plant was sun plant uh, uh, sorry sun flower the movement of sun plant uh, sun flower towards the sun we know that sun flower rotate its head towards the sun direction okay so the movement of sun flower towards the sun the movements of its head towards the sun is known as heliotropis very easy you can see this sunflower this its 
faces straight uh, towards the uh, sun this is their best example of heliotropism okay heliotropism is the phenomena or it is the uh, like movement of sun flower towards the sun source okay towards the sun the movement of sun flower's head towards the sun is the best example of heliotropism so this was the last this is the last topic okay let me like read for you children sunflower exhibit heliotropism a fascinating phenomena of young flower heads following the sun across the sky as it moves from east to west direction this is because the sunflower plants contain auxins which are sensitive to sunlight okay we had read this auxins what is auxins auxins are and they are uh, first of all uh, what is function they promote cell elongation okay and they induce the formation of parthenocarpic fruits as well as i told you what is parthenocarpic fruit the fruit the fruits which is grown without germination okay so um uh, this is because of the auxin okay because it is very auxin is very sensitive towards light okay which is sensitive to sunlight as a result they migrate from the part of the uh, plant bathed in sunlight to the shaded region of the stem okay so if there would be the question that uh, uh, by, uh, with the help of which hormone our heliotropism works so with the help of auxin because they are very sensitive to sunlight okay and uh that's why they do some mo do movements like this the sunflower you can see this okay so yep i hope this is clear to you so with this we come to an end of our chapter so yeah goodbye children and have a good day so if you love this chapter so don't forget to give it a big thumbs up subscribe my channel press the bell icon as well if you didn't do it yet okay and yeah i hope this all the points are clear to you okay chemical coordination in plants okay next we are going to cover the human anatomy and physio uh, and the uh, that uh, human anatomy okay we are going to cover that human anatomy the circulatory system and many more interesting chapters as well okay so yep that's it bye bye have a good day bye children